So I will be replacing the bell uh, here, the clutch bell on my Traxxas with this 5214 uh, bell. And I'm going to remove the engine and replace it. And I'm also going to replace the spur with this 3955. Uh, this one here is a 40 tooth spur, uh, which is marked right here in the back. All right, 40 tooth. And that's going to go in there versus the 38, that stock. Now the bell is a 14 tooth versus the 15 that is stock and the reason why is because it just needs more torque uh, the this easy run right uh, doesn't really have enough power to propel this truck in grass where it, that's where I'm testing it the most if you're running on asphalt it doesn't matter it's good enough out of the box uh, but here you just have to remove the screws so I'm removing the two uh, screws on this side uh, and you can just put the driver right in through those little gaps you'll notice the cutouts on the heat sink and right between the motor and then you have two screws on the other side uh, and that screw there which is what you use to set the mesh that one you just loosen you don't have to remove that one uh, but that's one that I'm going to be working with so I have uh, one more screw to go uh, just be careful because your sensors are on that side so you don't want to uh, just kind of lose anything. Uh, but here we go. Uh, so the engine is almost loose. I'm actually loosening them uh, little by little, and then I'll end up removing them completely. Uh, so here I'm back to the left side of the truck. So again, that's the reason why I'm replacing them. The other thing too is if you run a ratio that's too high, you're going to end up, uh, sorry, uh, too low. Uh, you're going to end up burning out the clutch a lot faster. Now, to remove the engine, one of the things, uh, remove the tune pipe, it makes it easier because you're gonna have to shift the engine uh, to loosen the carburetor. Uh, but here, uh, one second. Uh, all right. So if you look at this here, uh, in there, that's where the carburetor is. So there's the fork and then the little carburetor pin that goes in there so all you have to do is it goes left and right to open and close the carburetor just slide the engine back uh, so that that pin goes forward sorry slide the engine forward so the pin goes forward through the fork uh, and slides out so here I'm doing this uh, oh uh, I need to remove the tune pipe I'm gonna figure it out Uh, you can use a little driver uh, to help, but to be honest, if you remove the tune pipe, that's the best way to go. Uh, and that's it. So you just kind of slide it forward and over. Uh, remove the two wires from the easy start motor, and then uh, the glow plug wire. You can also remove the fuel line if you wanted to. I'm going to leave it on. I'm just going to put the motor up here. Now you're going to have to remove that e-clip right there and then everything uh, is going to come out just by removing that one clip so you can just use a driver you can use pliers uh, just be gentle and be careful that it doesn't fly out uh, and uh, always replace these uh, e-clips with new ones uh, but this will just slide out now unless there's something wrong and don't just pull the bell out uh, because there's a little washer in here that you have to remove that one there also uh, replace it if you have new ones uh, the, the new parts come with new ones so just replace it and these are the bearings uh, the bearings are good uh, this one uh, the inner one and the outer one so I'm just gonna put them on the new bell and swap them there's the clutch uh, this would be a very good time to replace the clutch uh, so you want to look at here the clutch if you have wear marks uh, because there's a spring that holds both of those there and that will wear out. It will wear out the spring, then break, and then as soon as the engine turns, it'll engage the clutch. And what's going to happen is every time you set your truck on the ground, after you turn it on, the truck's going to die because the clutch is engaged, but there's not enough power to propel the truck forward. So you'll notice that it'll run if it's off the ground, tires are off the ground, but then it'll die. So here's the new E-clip. I'm going to set that aside. 
Now this one hasn't been run that much, so I'm just going to take these bearings uh, and reuse them because they're very good. So just take a driver. You'll notice a gap between the two bearings. You can't really see here on the camera, but anyway, they will just push out. Uh, one of them goes out, the other one goes in, and that's all you do. So other than that, grab the new bell, uh, wipe the bearings clean uh, if they're dusty or need to be cleaned. This is probably a good time to re-oil them. If you need to re-oil them, these do not. Uh, but you just slide one in. Uh, make sure they're straight as they're going in because if you try installing them and they're slightly crooked, they will not go in. You don't want to damage the bell or the bearings, but that's it. You just need your fingers to push them in. And once they are set, uh, you can go ahead and place this over. Again, the clutch is good. If not, I, this would have been the time to replace it. Uh, but that slides in. Remember to slide that uh, little washer, uh, replace it with a new one, and then a new E-clip as well. All right, so hold it, make sure that the bearings are where they're supposed to be. Uh, you're gonna notice a little groove on the shaft of the uh, engine. Uh, that's where the E-clip goes. Just place it there, you can use gravity, just grab some pliers. Some needle nose will work, uh, just anything that will help you. Put your fingers on the sides of the bearings so that the E-clip doesn't uh, try to slide or turn, and then just uh, clip on, and that is it. Uh, now the bell moves freely as it should because remember it's only until the clutch engages so that one's good and now i have to replace the spur which is in there uh it has a total of just three screws really that's it uh you just replace them so i'm going to be replacing with this one's so those three and i'm using my scissors so there it is and for this i'm going to be using the 2.5 millimeter driver and I'm just going to loosen this one, and I'm going to hold the gear, and then I'll, I'll just go through all the screws and loosen them, and then I'll just spin the spur to get to the next screw, uh, because this is the point where you have access. So I'm just using my thumb to spin the spur to get to the next screw. So if you can see there, right in here, see, just hold this, and then just work on one of the screws. and then just loosen that one and you're gonna do it for all of them. And then once you do that, uh, right, there's a screw there. Once you do that, this will just pop off and then you can pop the new one back in. So that's one screw. Now I'm one of the next one. And, and this is pretty pretty simple, really. Uh, I mean, once you do one, you do them all. If you were working on a Slayer Pro, Traxxas Slayer Pro, it will be the same process. Now the Slayer Pro, uh, my Slayer Pro did not come with uh, telemetry. So with this one, I took a big jump and just landed uh, on the roof, hit the heatsink motor, uh, came out of mesh. Uh, well, the gears were out of mesh. And then what happened is I went and as it spun, it just chewed up the teeth. So that's one of the important things of just checking the mesh uh, when you fall. But you can see there, uh, well, kind of. Oh, there we go. So you can see how the teeth are destroyed. Uh, and that's the reason why. So that's what happened. Hit there, uh, shifted the engine, and then it just spun and chewed up the teeth. So now I have to replace the spur, which is fine. I was going to do anyway. Again, uh, this definitely needs more torque. Uh, but here is the new one, and the new one's just going to go in there. So just line up the holes. One, two, three, in there. And these Revos are very fun. These natural Revos are very fun. If you're looking into a uh, monster truck for under $600, that's a nitro truck. This is the way to go, I think. Uh, I've had a lot of fun with this one so far. But again, if you're running it on grass, it does not have enough torque. Uh, it's You're going to have to 
stock have the two-speed transmission engage much, much sooner than it would on pavement. And the reason why is because you're never going to get to the RPMs to engage it. And to be honest, the difference once you get it lower is very little uh, in terms of speed. You you will notice it, uh, but you know probably no more than five miles an hour uh, between first and second. So you could always just run on first gear if you wanted to. But I'd rather do this, just have more torque off the bat. And the reason why is to preserve the clutch. Uh, it just makes it easier on the clutch. If not, you're going to be destroying clutches left and right. And the Traxxas clutches, they wear out pretty fast. Uh, but here we go. When you're tightening uh, these screws here on the spur, just get one close and then get the other one close, get the other one close, and then tighten them. So you're going to go in a circle. And you're doing the same thing as when you were loosening it, spinning the spur with your thumb. Uh, I mean, the only difference is, remember the screws, you're going to go right to tighten instead of left to loosen. And take your time. Do not over-tighten the spur because it is plastic. You're going to warp it. You're going to damage it. So just be careful with this. Snug is all you need uh, for this. And something else that you might as well do when you're doing this is just check the little clutch pads here on the disc here for your transmission. Uh, but these are good. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, there are some hot racing aluminum pads that you can get. Uh, if you replace the engine with an OS engine, OS makes a fabulous engine for this. It has almost twice the power. Uh, I mean, at least 50% of the power, but it, you may want to consider new clutch pads for it. The OS engine is generally about $400 maybe, maybe a little more. Uh, but that would be a good replacement. You know, if you think about it, that OS engine is almost the price of this whole truck. But here we go. So now I just have to slide in the engine. Uh, I'm going to leave the screws in there. And I want to slide it in so that the uh, carburetor uh, fits in there properly, the little arm. And to the servo. Uh, just look around. Sometimes a little wire will go in there, make it harder it'll get stuck. This time it's taking longer. I have to check. Uh, if something feels like it's stuck, it probably is. So don't force it. Just double check everything in here. Make, make sure you're not going to break anything. Uh, okay, so I just need to get that in. And all right, let me just set it on the ground. I don't want to stick my head on the camera. Uh, that is one of the challenging things when you're doing this in front of a camera. So let me just grab a driver and that'll help me out. Uh, okay, it's this little guy back here. All right, screws. And there we go. All right, perfect. So now I can just set the screws in there. Everything's good. And remember the telemetry is on the right side. So that's, the, that's what I started tightening first. And it, it's not really to tighten, it's just to align everything. Uh, one of them is your RPM wire, and the other one is the ground wire for the Easy Start system. So that's something you really want to check. Make sure that that is installed correctly. All right. There it is. I'm trying to remove this. Sometimes that happens just because of the angle. So I'm going to go over here on the left-hand side. Now, really quick, do not fully tighten any of the screws until all four screws are set. And then once you do that, then you can go ahead and start driving the screws all the way down. But do not fully tighten one screw before the other ones are set. You want to sort of jump around. You can go in a circle or you can go in a cross pattern. Uh, so you can go, for example, top left, uh, bottom right, top right, bottom left, and then top left again. You repeat the process. It just depends on what it is that you're tightening. Uh, for example, here you can go in that uh, uh, cross pattern and it will work. Uh, and then after that, you bring it snug, then you can tighten appropriate. Do not over tighten because you are working with different metals, different parts, so you can damage them, strip them. 
my microphones are about to switch uh, over just because the battery, so the sound's gonna change. But right now I'm gonna loosen this uh, screw right here. So by doing that, see the engine can now move. So you wanna spin it left, which is counterclockwise. And just here for it, you can also grab just a piece of paper and stick a piece of paper between the gears if you want. Uh, just fold it in half, for example, binder paper. Something you can do is make it tight and you will kind of feel how it binds. Actually, I made a mistake. You wanna go right, you wanna go clockwise. Uh, that way the truck doesn't move. But anyway, if you make it tight, you will see how the gears sort of bind, and then once you spin the gear, you will hear it. And something else too that you can do is, if you just hold the bell, Try to see if it wiggles just a little. It should wiggle just a little if you're not using paper. That's a little better. too much there. That's what it should sound like. So at this point, you're gonna to want to grab the engine because it may want to walk and then just tighten the screw. And then check again. Perfect. Uh, and that is it. So now I can just go ahead and place the tuned pipe. And on these, usually leave the tie strap on. But you can remove it. I'm going to place it over here. And there it is. All right. And go ahead and put these on. And now we'll go ground at the bottom, positive on top. Make sure you do not invert these. So make sure it's red on top, black on bottom. Uh, all right, other than that, I loosened that. It's tight for thermometer. Nothing is in the way, nothing binds. So when you go in reverse, it should spin the gear. All right, well, that looks good. Other than that, I uh, just need to seat the filter. I am gonna clean the filter, so I'll do that another time. But that's pretty much it. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh,
My hair! My tongue! My, my rod! 